I recently released revision 5 of the yellow hat board. Compared to the previous version, I made some changes to simplify the do-it-yourself process. In this video, I show step by step how you can build and test your own Loconet board. And to make it even easier for you, I have added a yellow hat kit version to the Tindy store. Welcome to the IoTT channel, I am Hans Tanner. Welcome to all new subscribers and welcome back to everyone else. I am happy you made it here and thank you for your support of this channel. The yellow hat, which was first introduced in videos number 47 and 50 back in 2020, features 32 input channels for buttons and block detectors, as well as a NeoPixel chain with up to 500 LEDs. It is the perfect module to build a simple CTC panel as shown in video number 9, but it can also be used to connect any kind of buttons or block detectors and then send the input status via Loconet to the command station or software like JMRI. Watch the videos in the Yellowhead playlist to see how it can be used to create an automated block and signaling system. If you want to use the yellow hat on your layout, there are three ways to get one. You can order the ready-made device from the Tindy store listed in the description below, or you can build your own device either from scratch or based on the do-it-yourself kit. To build a yellow hat from scratch, you find everything you need on the GitHub page listed in the description. Schematics, PCB layout, bill of materials, firmware source code, and the STL files for the enclosure. The schematics are available as PDF and as JSON file that you can load into the free EasyEDA design software. To have the PC board manufactured, you can download the Gerber file along with the bill of materials and parts placement file for the robot. With these files, you can order assembled PCBs from your PCB manufacturer. I usually order my PCBs from JLC PCB mainly because they cooperate with a parts supplier and they have the best integrated ordering web page. The files that you download from the GitHub page typically should work for placing a PCB order, and in case one or several of the used parts are not available at the time of the order, you can use the design software to replace them and recreate the production files. JLC PCB offers a hobby-friendly option of ordering five PCBs and only two of them assembled with components. The first step I do after receiving the boards is uploading the firmware to the microcontroller on the yellow hat board. Loading the firmware is done using the pin header connectors J1 and J2 in the area where the IoTT stick will be placed. J1 is an ISP connector. You can use it to either load the full firmware or just a bootloader. You can use a normal Arduino Uno development board and connect it as shown here and described in the Arduino documentation listed in the description below. Then load the Arduino as ISP program from the example section in the Arduino IDE. After that switch the programmer to Arduino as ISP and click the Burn Bootloader option. When successful you are ready for the second step which is loading the actual firmware. To do so, you can use an FTDI programmer and connect it to J2 as the pinout of J2 matches with the standard FTDI programmer. The sketch to be loaded is in the firmware section of the GitHub page. Load it into the Arduino IDE and then upload it to the yellow hat board using the FTDI programmer. Make sure you set the board to Arduino Uno and the programmer to ABR ISP, which should be the default option anyway. Next, you can download the STL files from the GitHub page. Load them into your 3D printer and about 3 hours later you should have a nice enclosure for your yellow hat device. Really simple, but if you think you are not familiar with all that, 
you can conveniently order a yellow head kit from the Tindy store, which comes with an assembled PC board with preloaded firmware, the 3D printed enclosure and all the other parts that are needed to assemble the yellow head as shown in this bill of materials. Once you have all the parts available, you can start the assembly process and in the next few minutes I'm going to show you step by step how to build and test your yellow hat. The entire process is described in the assembly and test description that is also available on GitHub. The first step is soldering the NeoPixel LED to the bottom side of the board. The best way to do this is dispensing some soldering paste on the soldering pads. Then use tweezers to carefully place the LED in the designated spot. Make sure to orient it correctly. The small triangle on the housing of the LED must match with the triangle on the PC board silk screen. After placing, you can use a hot air gun to heat the LED for about 30 seconds until the solder paste melts. Alternatively, you can place the entire PC board on a hot plate of about 250 degrees Celsius until the same thing happens. It is best to use a low temperature solder paste for this process so that you are not desoldering some of the other components. If you have none of these tools available, it is also possible to solder the LED using a fine point soldering iron. In this case, put some flux paste on the soldering pads to facilitate the flow of the solder. The next component to be mounted is the 90 degree stick connector. The easiest way to do that is inserting the connector into an IOTT stick, place it in the correct position and solder the pins on the bottom side of the board. Step 3 is installing the NeoPixel pigtail. Typically, the wires are colored white for ground, red for 5 volts and green for the NeoPixel control signal. On the board, the soldering eyes are labeled R, G and W to indicate the colors of these wires. Insert the wires into the holes from the top side of the board and solder them on the bottom side. When done, verify that they are completely inserted and that the polarity is correct. The next step is installing the pin headers A, B, C and D on the top side of the board. The pin headers have two pins for the 3.3V supply, two pins for ground and eight pins in between for the input lines. You can use them for individual sensors or you can use a flat ribbon cable to distribute and connect groups of sensor devices. The last step is installing the DC barrel connector on the top side of the board. Place it in the correct location and solder it from the bottom side. That's it. All components are now mounted and you are ready to test the board. To get started, connect an IOTT stick to the IOTT connector. Then connect an LED matrix or a string of NeoPixels to the NeoPixel pigtail. Now use a DC power supply between 8 and 16 volts and connect it to the DC barrel connector. You should see the IoTT stick booting up. If it is the first time, you will have to configure the IoTT stick to your Wi-Fi network or as a standalone access point. You now can point a web browser to the IP address indicated on the stick display. The browser comes up with the configuration page where you can select yellow hat as hat device and configure a Loconet command source of your choice. Click save and restart and wait until the LED chain and hardware button setup tabs are displayed. Click on button hardware setup to test the input lines. You now can connect each of the input lines to the ground pin and the status change will be indicated on the web page. The input type drop down field lets you select the type of message the yellow hat is sending to the command station. If you want to use the input as block detector, you would select detector 
and you then can configure if the yellow hat should send free, occupied or both messages and whether the logic of the signal should be inversed. Similar options are available for the other input types. You can try the various options and see the impact by opening the LocoNet tab and watching the type of messages that are sent to the command station. Next, open the LED chain setup tab and configure one or two LEDs on the LED matrix. Issue commands from your command station and watch the LEDs changing color, brightness, etc according to the settings you made. If everything is working, it's time to put the yellow headboard into the enclosure. Place the upper frame of the enclosure on the top side of the yellow headboard and make sure the pigtail is correctly placed in the opening next to the DC plug. Then slide the top assembly into the lower half of the enclosure and use a small screwdriver to align the holes in the PC board with the screw holes in the enclosure. Now use a hex key to drive in the M2 screws. Carefully drive them until you feel the torque is increasing significantly. Then stop. Turn them in until the enclosure is completely closed, but be careful not to over tighten them. That's it, your yellow hat is now complete and operational. And that's it for this video. I hope this information was useful or at least interesting for you and I was able to show you that building your own yellow hat really is a piece of cake, at least when using the do-it-yourself kit. If so, please leave a comment below to let me know and click the like button. Doing so helps to promote this video and the IOTT channel in general because YouTube likes the likes. And if you like this type of content, please subscribe to the IOTT channel and hit the bell icon so that you are in a premium seat when new videos come out. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.